Hi, Weston Timmers, Automation Specialist with Warner Electric Supply. Welcome to Warner Electric Supply's Automation Learning Series. This series brings you the latest in automation technologies, products, and how-to videos. This video will highlight some of the features in the V32 release of Studio 5000 Logix Designer. To start off, um, we've added some additional data types to allow for 64-bit math instructions. So you'll see those on the left-hand side of the uh, lower half, uh, the unsigned short integers and down. Uh, those are 64-bit data types, um, and those are available in the newer Compact Logix 5380 and Control Logix 5580 processors. Uh, what those are going to allow you to do is uh, make more precise calculations and then also uh, the ability um, to work with some third-party communications such as HART. Uh, just as a recap from V31, um, some of the uh, Logix tag-based alarming capabilities. Uh, so what that allows us to do is, um, rather than using the ALMA and ALMD instructions in Logix in order to do um, processor-based alarming. Uh, the tag-based alarming in V31 allows us to uh, create factory talk alarms uh, based on uh, specific um, tags or groups of tags. Uh, so what this provides us is smaller memory footprint, meaning that uh, you don't have those instructions in logic. And then it should also uh, result in a uh, faster scan time, program scan time, uh, because you don't necessarily have to have all these rungs with alarming instructions on them any longer. Um, the uh, Logix tag-based alarms are only supported in the, again, in the newer Compact Logix 5380, 5480, uh, and the L8 or 5580 control Logix controllers. Uh, and the reason for that is that uh, there is a, uh, a separate core in the processor dedicated to doing alarming. Uh, and what that allows us to do is um, scan these alarms uh, separate from the scanning of normal uh, ladder logic or regular code. Here's an example of what that looks like. Uh, so on the left hand side the upper window is showing uh, the alarm library and you'll see there which alarms are configured uh, and then there's also alarm groups so um, you can group alarms uh, into cer certain groups to do uh, bulk actions on those and we'll get into that shortly here uh, and you can also drill down and see that uh, for that PV XIC 500 tag uh, we've actually got five alarms configured for that one so you can actually expand that out and that's what's showing in the lower window uh, all the five different alarms that are configured um, with various different conditions so the high 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 low and low low alarms uh, and all have different expressions associated with those uh, what's also kind of nice here is that it's showing the current alarm state over on the left hand side so it'll it'll tell you in real time if any of those alarms are currently active i mentioned that uh, bulk actions uh, that we can take on alarm sets so that's where this aso instruction so this is a new instruction and uh, what this allows us to do is um, initiate bulk actions on a set of alarms. So we can do things like enabling or disabling groups of alarms, acknowledging a whole group of alarms at once, uh, resetting, what have you. Uh, so that's done with this new ASO instruction. Changing gears a little bit, uh, there's some new function block diagram instructions uh, in V32. And again, these are only supported in the newer controllers, uh, but basically you'll see there on the left um, the old instructions are still going to be in there, so the, the add, multiply, uh, the different Boolean instructions, those will all still be available to you. However, you do have the option of using these newer, uh, basically slimmed down versions of those same instructions. So it, it allows for um, kind of a little bit easier flow in function block. If you're just doing simple math instructions, you don't necessarily always need that backing tag that was required in the old instructions. Uh, so that eliminates the, the backing tag and then it also makes kind of cleans up uh, the, the area a little bit makes it easier to follow and uh, understand the logic of what's going on uh, throughout your function block diagram instructions and logic. Uh, 
couple of new enhancements here as far as productivity goes in V32. Um, some online editing uh, features that we get now. Um, we're getting one step closer to being able to um, edit user-defined data types while online. So we can't do a full edit. Uh, however, uh, we can now re rename different members of the UDT while online. So basically what the idea there is, is you would create your UDT with spare members inside of it that you're not necessarily using. Uh, so that's what they're saying there with the excess memory. Uh, and then you can now rename those unused ones while online. So uh, the idea being that you would create some spares and then later on, if you did need to make changes while online, you could uh, then just rename and start using one of those spare members of the UDT without having to go offline and do a download. Um, so getting us one step closer to online editing of a UDT uh, obviously requires a little bit of upfront work, but uh, uh, definitely can be a nice thing in the future if you do build that in. Uh, another thing here is uh, tags on scan. So we can rename tags that are being trended by uh, either Panel B5000s uh, or uh, Factory Talk View SE, um, things like that. Logics Designer, if you've got uh, Studio 5000 Logics Designer open and something's being trended, you can now rename those tags. Whereas in the past, they were locked out if they were being trended by any of these packages. Um, and then just a couple of nice things over on the right here. Uh, trend management. So in the past, um, you kind of had to do things based on one trend at a time. So if you had multiple set up, maybe you wanted to just do a bulk delete or a bulk export, copy paste, what have you. And you had to do it one at a time per trend. Um, so this now gives you that ability to highlight multiple and uh, do bulk actions on those trends. Um, another kind of nice one here is the nested delete. Um, so if you've ever uh, maybe taken a uh, pre-created program that you use for a different project and you wanted to bring it in and kind of keep some of that project, but maybe you had a rack of I.O. or uh, a whole tree of uh, Ethernet modules, drives, what have you, uh, in the uh, I.O. tree, in the I.O. configuration, what you had to do was go through and delete each one of those um, child items, I'll call it, each uh, Ethernet module out there on the Ethernet network, and then delete those separately, and then you can delete that uh, the top parent module. Uh, now what this allows you to do is just delete out that uh, parent module, and then everything that was configured underneath it would also be wiped out too. So it uh, makes it a little bit easier if you ever have to delete a whole uh, maybe tree of um, Ethernet-based I.O. Uh, or drives or anything like that. So another update that we got here was uh, for the device web page. So this is actually coming from um, typically like a Logix controller. Uh, so if you type in its IP address in any web browser, it'll bring up the web page for that controller and give you some diagnostic information that doesn't require anything but a web browser. So it makes it quite uh, simple to get to, to get some basic uh, status information out of that controller. Um, more so than just what you would see on the front of it. It'll obviously duplicate what it's showing on the lights and what's scrolling on the display, uh, but then it goes one step further, shows you things like safety signature, lock status, um, the different status indicators. So uh, this can allow you to uh, remotely troubleshoot, potentially, if you have a, um, a customer that has a controller that's maybe faulted, uh, or you need to pull just some basic information from it, but they don't have Studio 5000 software to go online, um, they could just simply open a web browser, get on the network, type in the IP address of the controller, and get this basic information out. So quite handy for troubleshooting. Uh, a couple changes to the quick watch window. So we always had that watch window in Studio 5000, but it's gotten a little bit better. Uh, what they now allow you to do is um, create a, a watch window that can have uh, tags from different routines in there if you wanted to. Uh, you now don't have to name the quick watch window, whereas in the past you did. Um, what's also nice is that you can uh, pull up a watch window for various different routines that you might have open. So uh, it might not be necessarily the window, uh, the routine that you currently have open, uh, but maybe you want to see the tags in a different routine that might be changing and, and monitor those. 
Uh, so it allows you to easily navigate back and forth between the different routines, different tags in different routines, and have that open at the same time as, as you're watching or scrolling through some code. So it makes it a little bit easier for troubleshooting and, and following around what's going on in the program. Uh, and then finally here, um, not a huge feature, but uh, a nice one nonetheless. So in V31, uh, we kind of got a new look and feel and we got tabs across the top now so that we can open up different windows and they'll open up in their own independent tabs. Makes it easier for navigating around. Uh, in V32, they added an option to close all but the current window that you're looking at. Uh, so if you right click a tab, uh, it'll give you that option to close everything else out other than just the one that you uh, currently have open or currently have highlighted. Um, so it just makes it a little easier as far as uh, closing out some extra windows that you may have open. Uh, and then this one personally I like a lot is uh, the function block wire jumpers. Um, so this kind of cleans up your function block programming quite a bit. Uh, whereas in the past, if you had two wires that crossed over each other, it wasn't always clear uh, which wire went which direction to which instruction. Um, so now they added these wire jumpers. So just to make it a little bit more uh, visible as far as uh, where different things are connected and, and what's going where. So um, just cleans it up, simplifies it a little bit, and uh, it's just a really nice feature. For more information, contact your local Warner Electric Supply representative. Be sure to check out Warner Electric Supply's YouTube channel for more videos from our automation learning series.